What is up? Welcome to another episode of Sports Card Nation. Got a good show on tap for today. Not one guest, but two guests. They go by the name Oz and Tony. They are both hosts of the Cousins Collectibles podcast, so something that's in my rotation. Heavily uh, recommend it be in yours. And what I like about these guys is down to earth. Honest, genuine, uh, just talk about the hobby. Uh, for, you know, s- sort of new, kind of coming back, but uh, learning as we all do along the way. And again, they'll 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 tell you as such, and uh, just like the way they do things. You know, the tagline of the show, obviously, probably know by now, is hobbies of people, and these two guys sort of epitomize that, live that. And, uh, again, uh, you know, they, they started doing shows and they, they did a podcast. Well, you'll hear us talking about it, how they incorporated the show, the kind of the, the pre-show and the post-show in the same episode I thought was, uh, very well done. And, and these guys are just fun, you know, happy-go-lucky, so to speak, but they're, they're learning and they're teaching and, uh, Again, uh, getting to know them uh, now, I like them uh, even more, uh, uh, you know, as I get to know what they're about. And uh, uh, they're good people to hobby and uh, happy to call them. Uh, you know, anyone that goes on their show, they kind of honor uh, with the cousin tag. So I'm Cousin John and uh, uh, proud to proud to wear that label. So uh, I think you enjoyed the episode. We, we cut it up some and, uh, again, Got to have a little fun, and that's what the hobby's about. So with that being said, let's get this show started. What up, everybody? It's your boy, Cousin Oz, the people's mailman. And along with Cousin Tony, the architect, we are Cousins Collectibles. Make sure to check us out on the Cousins Collectibles podcast, as well as on Instagram at Cousins underscore Collectible. Before we get out of here, we wanted to remind you of a couple things. First and foremost, remember, the hobby is the people. And as always, keep focused, keep positive, and keep collecting. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time the show starts in five, four, three, two, one. Are you ready? It's showtime. All right, real happy to be joined by my next two guests on the sports card shop at MoCo. Uh, guest line. They do their own podcast, uh, one that I'm actually just moved to the top of my charts and I'm a big fan of. And uh, I want to welcome Tony and Oz from Cousins Collectibles uh, podcast. Thank you so much, John. I mean, we are truly honored to be on the podcast. Thank you so much for having us on, man. Well, thank thank you guys for, for coming on. Like I said, I, I'm not a lip service guy. I don't say things because it sounds good or I know it'll make someone feel good. And that's the only reason I say it. Uh, you guys, are, you may be new on the scene. I, I know you started your show in January, uh, but I don't care when someone starts. It's the content uh, itself that we're, we'll be judged on. And you guys, I tell you what, it is tough. I'll, I'll let you answer this uh, kind of statement. I think, it, you know, when I started three over three years ago, there's really only four or five podcasts. And so the waters were as, you know, the pool wasn't as full as I like to say, to start one now, I think that the uh, degree of difficulty is higher because there's just just so much uh, competition now. But you guys uh, come in. I I really love uh, what you're doing. And uh, so kudos uh, on on the show. And uh, like I said, at the top of my playlist, and uh, I appreciate you guys. And coming in uh, fresh like that, that's, that's, you know, that's not easy. It's easier said than done. Yeah, for sure. And and I just want to echo what Oz said, man. Thank thank you for having us. It's it's a pleasure. Uh, you were one of our kind of inspirations to 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 get behind the mic. Um and, and just with our show, you know, we I can I can speak for myself that I came in during that hobby boom. And, you know, as this hobby expands and things change and fanatics and all that stuff that's coming in, new people are going to come keep coming into the hobby. So we kind of centered our show around that 
and trying to address questions that new people have and that, you know, mistakes that you make early on, as opposed to talking about plays and cards and things of that nature, because none of that means anything if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And, and, and one thing I, I love what you just said, like mistakes, right? I've been doing this a long time, right? 30 years. I make mistakes and I appreciate when, when content creators say, Hey, I screwed up. Remember when I said this, I was wrong or I did this. It was, I'd like a mulligan. I can't have one. <laughs> I, I think it shows we're human. Uh, I, I think it's refreshing when people admit, you know, people don't like to admit when they're wrong or they made a mistake or they're maybe they're a little embarrassed about it or self-conscious uh, about it. Uh, but, uh, you know, you'll hear me on this show. Maybe you have, you know, mm-hmm. say, you know, when I said this, I was, I was wrong on that one. And I think it's, I think it's okay to do that. I think it, it I think it's refreshing. I, I think, I think it bothers me a little bit when if, if I'm listening or watching someone and they never, Say, hey, I made a mistake, or I'm always right. Like that's a little bit sort of a turnoff because you know it's not true, and they're yeah. just not really sort of coming clean with that. And I know you guys, you know, aren't like that, and and you kind of like me. Not that it's about being, but to hey, we're human. We're not always right. We're our opinions, our opinions, be, you know, because it could be two of them, each side of the corner, or more more than two, even in some cases. And uh, you know, I, I appreciate when content creators. Uh, do that and uh, kind of, uh, you know, leave themselves open and, and very, you know, uh, out, uh, honest and, and forthcoming with, with stuff where maybe some others uh, aren't as much. And you guys uh, do that. Is it just something in your personalities? It's, is it a conscious effort? I mean, how, what what would you say to that? I mean, honestly, listen, I'm Mr. Mistake when it comes to this hobby. I, I, I don't know anything about anything. I'm going to be honest with you guys. You know, I, I collected a little when I was younger, stopped in, you know, about high school, picked it back up in the beginning of the pandemic. Um, You know, I'm just like everybody else, just trying to learn. And Cousin Tony and I, we, we got together and we were collecting. He finally came on board. He started about six, seven months ago. So he's brand new, but we had questions we loved collecting cards. We loved what the hobby was about. And it, it just, you know, we started digging deeper and deeper and deeper. And then we just came to a point where we're like, you know, we were listening to some content. Your content, obviously, John, was great. You were one of our inspirations. But a lot of other of the shows that were out there kind of seemed to be getting a little repetitive, saying the same things, not really educating. And we just had questions. And we're like, man, why don't we just start something up? And the questions that we have, we'll just go ahead and and get the answers to them. And if we don't have the answers, let's get people on that do. And it kind of just grew from there. And that's, that's where we're at right now. Well, that's, that's cool. And you, you know, I've, Look, I don't care how long you've been doing this. It could be an, an old codger like me. I learn something every day. And and that's just the way the hobby's changing and the news cycle. If you're not, you're not trying to, to learn. You're you're kind of closed off or, or closed minded. And uh there's nothing wrong with saying, Hey, you know, we're learning about, you know, this. You know, for me, like NFTs, I don't like NFTs, you know, Tony and us, but enough people do that. We have to talk about it. I have to bring people on that uh, maybe like them more than me and, and pick their brain and, you know, see why, you know, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm maybe I am a little close minded on, on certain things, not across the board. And it's 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 nice to hear another you know, voice. And uh, I think, you know, shows that have guests on uh, like this one, like yours, I mean, we're, we're, I'm biased here, but seeing all three of us do that. But I think those are the best, the best ones to me is to get those difference of, of opinions or different takes or different spin uh, on things. And, and not just, you know, I do hobby quick hits, which is usually just me. It's a quicker show, but um, I, I like I like the conversations, right? The the stories, uh, the conversations that you have with uh, uh, all different folks in the hobby, and uh, I think you I think you learn the most when you you talk uh, to other people. You know, when I talk to myself, I don't learn uh, that much <laughs> other than the fact that I'm a, I'm a crazy guy. But uh, you know, I, I I think those those kind of conversations and, and hobby. Uh, you know, stories and shows are, are to me the most informative, probably to people who listen to it. And even in a selfish sort of way, myself, 
uh, as well as, as you guys said, like, hey, if we don't know this, let's bring bring someone on. So I want to ask you, when you guys, you know, got together and said, hey, you know, being new, whatever, doesn't matter. Let's do this podcast. You know, what what we know the show is now, uh, it, I mean, was that really the the plan from the start or have you kind of deviated from what you thought it was going to be to to its incarnation now? I can tell you that it was not what we do now is not <laughs> what we intended to do. And but it kind of grew organically where, OK, we can get on these mics and we can turn them on and we can talk. But if it, it's going to shine through if if we don't. You know, if, if we don't know what we're talking about, it's just not going to last. And yeah. so I'm like, you know what? We can only talk so much. You know, we're both kind of new into this. So I'm I'm just going to, I told Oz, I said, you know what? I'm going to shoot my shot and I'm going to go to the biggest shows. And these guys are human and mm-hmm. I'm in sales. So when somebody tells me, no, you're just, all you're doing is you're just kind of like, don't worry. You're going to say, yeah, in about five minutes. <laughs> you know, we'll just get yeah. there. But, you know, and, and I just said, you know, what what better way to try and learn than from people who have been doing this, who, who've been in the game for a while. And, you know, we'll ask them questions. And I'm, I mean, I know that there are questions that pe- other collectors have. So, you know, let, let's just ask. And the worst thing they can do is say no. And it's fine. We'll go to the next guy and the next guy and the next guy. And eventually we're going to talk to these people who are in the hobby and spread the word and, and hopefully you know, I know personally, I take something from every show when we're done yeah. recording. I sit there, I'm like, hmm, okay, I didn't think about that. Oh, this is something different. Okay. And things of that nature. So it definitely from where we started to where we are. I mean, I don't know that it's going to be an interview show going forward all the time, but it's something that we love and we're kind of finding our, our groove in doing that. So I don't know. But yeah, to answer your question, no, it wasn't. And, you know, here we are. Yeah, it it really like I said when we first started, it was kind of like let let's get all the questions that we have and, and let's get answers to them. We we had a little outline of the ep- episodes. We had ten to fifteen episodes planned out. We got through maybe three, <laughs> and the rest have been uh, interviews, which is crazy. Because like I said, Tony when he puts his mind to something, it's like yo, dude, I'm just gonna reach out to these dudes. I seen you know this one guy, he's on you know he's doing this guy's episode. You know why can't we do that? And I was like. Yeah, whatever. Go ahead. You know, just joking, you know, not even thinking about it. Ten minutes later, he's like, yo, we booked them. I was like, shut up. Yeah. He's like, no, I'm seriously. <laughs> seriously. We got cousin John Newman coming. Yeah. yeah OK. Dude. He's like, look. <laughs> so it, it, it's a trip. Um, but the, the main thing is, you know, when we get you guys on and, you know, the experiences that we, we get and, and learn from you guys, it, it just it really is awesome. And, you know, talking to you, John, and the other guests that we've had, you guys have made it so easy for us when we really don't know exactly, you know, what we're doing, even, you know, the podcast and thing, Tony's learning day by day, you know, we're trying new things with audio and, and things like that. So it's just like, I come up with some questions, we talk it out and let, let's, let's roll, let's do it. And so far so good. And then after the episode, we go ahead, we get back on, it's, it's 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. We're still there. We're just talking hobby. We're talking about the, you know, the interview we just had. And it's just like, you're on this high and it's, it, it, it's an awesome thing. I really love it. Yeah. And and it's like you said, the adrenaline rush, the high you get from it. I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that because until you do it, you, you know, people may not realize, sure. It can be a grind at some points when you get into the, some of the, or, you know, after the show's over, you do some of the editing and, and cleaning the stuff up. Uh, but even that's a labor of love for, for me most of the time, and I'm sure uh, for you. It's going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more with Oz and Tony. Are you a new sports card collector or someone that's returning to the hobby? Maybe you're just looking for a friendly, trustworthy community to hang out with and enjoy collect. Midwest Box Breaks has been bringing collectors together for almost four years with affordable breaks, helpful Twitter treads, and a Discord group packed with generous people who care about the hobby and other collectors. Check out the breaks at MidwestBoxBreaks.com. First-timers can use the coupon code MBB10 and save 10% on their first order. Your first break mail will also include a bonus card so no one strikes out on their first break. Our goal is to bring you as much value as possible. We've even launched an NFT project dedicated to the hobby. Find us on Twitter 
at Midwest Box Break. Sport Card Nation has returned with Cousin Collectibles. And the other thing I love with what you guys do is, and you can tell when you listen to, to shows, whether it be mine or anyone else's, right? You can always tell whether the, the person or, or people on the show, you know, are enjoying themselves or passionate. And that's one thing I love with, with your show. Uh, you can tell it's genuine. There's no stick. You're not being phony. You, 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 you're laughing. You, 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 the conversations, like you said, that you have with other guests, and, and uh, uh, they're genuine. They're, there's nothing fake about it. Uh, I don't think every show uh, can hang their hat. Uh, on that, but I know you guys do. I I, I try to, uh, you know, not to pat myself on the back. That's how I am. You know, yeah. even even tonight we're having you guys on. Uh, I don't really have any scripted. Maybe a couple bullet points I want to hit, but other than that, I'm not a big write ten, fifteen questions out type of thing. I think the best to me for me, uh, the best conversations are one that just kind of come from within, from the heart, and uh, go from there. And um, everyone has a different style. I'm not saying s- someone writes questions out that they're bad and I'm good. It's not not like that. It just everyone has a different style. And, and one of the biggest compliments I get uh, from folks that, that listen to the show is like, is that? Hey, I love when I listen to Sports Card Nation, John, I feel like I'm eavesdropping, <laughs> you know, at, at a bar top or dinner table with – you know, in this case, three guys talking about the hobby, about content creation. Uh, and it, it just feels like a natural conversation, not sort of like inside the actor's studio. Not that, there's, <laughs> you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's different flavors to, to in, interview styles. I'm just saying to me, I think I enjoy it the most. And I've, I've you know, even with the guests themselves to say, hey, I real like I've done a lot of these shows, but. I appreciate kind of the way, you know, you, you do things. And, uh, you know, it's, I think that's the best compliment uh, you can get. And, uh, you know, people know, I think, you know, people are smart. People know when someone's sort of going through the motions or, or doesn't have a passion for something. Uh, and, and when they do, I, I think people are smart enough to tell. And I think I am and, and, and listening to your guys, you know, I, I feel like uh, you definitely enjoy what you're doing. Like you say, learning uh, as you go, as we all are. So don't you're not alone uh, as, as well. You know, you did a show. I want to talk about. I know I, when I was on your show, I I, I kudoed you this, but uh, now that you're you're here, I wanted to kudo you again. You did a show. You did your not talking about podcast show. You actually did your first card show as dealers. You guys are from the Philly area. I know that, mm-hmm. but for those listening. And you, you recently did uh, your first card show. And, you uh, you, you know, I, I love that you talked about sort of the whole process. People who don't, I'm a dealer since I've been 15 years old. Um, and so people don't who don't do shows as on that side of the table don't realize sort of the work and effort that goes along in, into getting show ready, you know, from uh, getting the cards organized, uh, pricing stuff and uh you, you talked about the pricing the angle itself uh was time consuming where you stayed up and didn't sleep as much as as you liked to, to get it done in time and but one thing i love what you did with the podcast is you know i do shows and i've i've dedicated like a hobby quick hits episode sort of after the show i'll kind of do a review of the show good bad or great you know uh, you did something I've I, again, like I said on, on your guys' show that I've never heard anyone do before. Where you kind of broke the show up, kind of the as we're getting ready for show. Hey, we're gonna when we come back, we're gonna we're gonna post game wrap up the show. How we did good, bad, and and that in the same episode. And uh, to do that in the way it was done, man, I, I, you had me like locked in and. <laughs> And listening and uh, just well done uh, with that. Even with that episode, I know, like you said, like kind of what you thought the show was going to be, you sort of, you know, have evolved. Did you plan that episode like from the jump like that? Because it came out to me, it was well done. It was different. Or did that kind of like just kind of come about like that to that particular episode? Um. Yes and no. Yes, that we, we kind of talked about we wanted to do a podcast about our show prep and then the post game. 
And as we were going through it, um, we were like, you know what? And not that we set out to, oh, nobody else is doing this or this, that, or the other. But I felt that in order to get that genuine reaction, I was like, you know what? Let's record. We'll record our, our you know, pregame and stuff like that where we talked about pricing and things of that nature. And and just quick on, on the pricing thing, you know, it, being, be, being a dealer is tough. And, and, you know, I know that sometimes when buyers walk up to the table, the first thing they do is they whip out their phone. And I, you know, I, as a newer buyer would do it, you know, I looking at the comps and say the comp says this and, and the dealer might be a little higher. Well, you know, in addition to that price, you know, there's the time that the dealer put into pricing those things and and the gas to get there. So all of that does factor into those numbers. So that's just something that I had a newfound appreciation for, but getting back to the pod. So, you know, as we're, as we're doing this, I'm like, you know what, let's just, we'll stop here. We're going to go do the show. And when we come back, you know, we're going to be dragging, but <laughs> let, let's do it. And um, I, I know Oz and, and we talked about it. Our voices sounded a lot deeper. You know, we had that, <laughs> we had that, that, uh, you know, midnight show, you know, yeah. That midnight, like uh, the, the slow jam, kind of show a little Barry white a little bit yeah a little bit of that and (laughs) so and all of our reactions were fresh and and, and, you know you could hear we were we were tired but it was it was it was genuine genuine and it was just it was fun and it it was cool to do it like that yeah I mean I agree totally and when we got back we it it was the conversation was like bro if if you if you want if you're tired you know we can we can wait till tomorrow we both looked at each other we're like nah Let's do it. Show must go on. Show must go on. Let, yeah. Let's make it happen. We, you know, we're fresh. We're just coming off it. Let's do it. And I, I guess it came across. It was just organic. And you know, from from the very beginning, just you know, like you said, we we stayed up. It was a Sunday. I remember we. It was it was during the the NFL playoffs. We're watching the game. We're talking. We're trying to price. That wasn't working. It that was taking forever. Tony finally was like, yeah, "Dude, I got to go home." You know, my wife's waiting for me, and I, we were like halfway done. I was like, "Oh my god!" And we've never, you know, I, dude. All I did was collect. You know, Tony he bought a couple, you know, things, and we were, we're brand new into all of this. And then, kind of like, shout out to my man Alex Lynn Delco Rips. The whole reason that came about, he went up on Instagram, and a couple of his buddies decided at the last second not to join him he got a you know a couple tables so he put a little thing out there on the instagram if anybody's interested i'm gonna be at the fishtown show i got a couple tables hit me up so tony just sent me the the dm he's like yo this dude uh he got a table open you down and i was like yeah okay whatever you know like seriously he's like yeah like why not and i said you know what why not let's do it you know it's an experience we have no idea what the hell we're doing, but let's, you know, I'll, I'll bring my slabs. You sometimes bring your slabs. That, sometimes that might be an advantage. Uh, yeah. I, to tell you the truth. <laughs> that you, you know, you're coming across as it might be a disadvantage. I sometimes know not knowing is, is, is sometimes not the worst thing in the world, but go, but go ahead. Yeah. So John, we walked through that door. Uh, like literally I had butterflies walking through. You see all the tables with the, the, the nice linens that they're putting up and the, and the chairs and they got the music playing. And I'm like, what did I, you know, what do we get ourselves into here? <laughs> so we were like the first ones there. We, we, we don't know how to set up. We just, you know, we had just bought a showcase and we're just like, okay, I guess we could do this. I guess we could do that. So it, it was just, it was an awesome experience from, from just walking through the doors, seeing everything and then meeting Alex and a couple other guys that were there. And, and of course, uh, you know, all the people from Fishtown show were awesome and, you know, we did great. You know, that was, that was, you know, that was every, it was awesome. You know, and the icing on the cake was, damn, we made some money, some real money. <laughs> <laughs> I told him my one, uh, my one episode, I came home, my wife was like, so how'd you do? And similar to you, John, when you, you know, had your show and you had $1,500 in your pocket, you know, I had a little bit more than that. I, I took it out and I made, made it rain on top of my wife and she's like, Oh, this is good. And I was like, no, nah, yeah, yeah, it's real. Now give me my money back. Let, let, let's go. You know, that's my money. <laughs> and, um, but it, it was an awesome experience. And then going back to it and talking about it and, and how, you know, the whole experience was at the end. That, that, that was really, that was an, a, an interesting episode. Really liked it. I, again, I, you know, I've, I've done this long enough. I've listened to another, uh, enough episodes of a lot of different folks showed. I just was, I just remember 
number one, being enthralled the whole way. And then after it was over, like, man, that was just the way that was done. Sort of the pregame, postgame, but all in one episode rather than, hey, come back next week. We'll talk about how we did on the show this week, you know, which is kind of what I do. I just thought it was sort of innovative. It was it was a fresh way to do it. Um, I won't do it now because, like, you already <laughs> beat me to it, which is why I'm giving you giving you props. But it was just well done. It was different than kind of traditionally what we've seen. You know what I mean? Uh, we've seen it sort of with the video logs where someone will video, mm-hmm. hey, I've just arrived at a hotel, get ready for the show. But a lot of times that's as a on the other side of the table as a consumer, not as a dealer. So to mm-hmm. do it from – Kind of the dealer's perspective, and all even more enthralling. Hey, it's your first show ever. Period. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, not the second show, not the third show, the first one ever, and kind of the to go through the process of of uh, you know getting ready to do this, then a little bit of the nerves, like you said, and then hey, when we come back, you know, we're going to talk about how we did or didn't do, and and doing well, and kind of talking about that. That being said, you, you had a, a good first uh, show. Time to step aside for a real quick break, but we'll be right back with more from the guys. Greg Morris Cards wants to buy your cards. A long-trusted name in the sports card business, Greg has been buying sports card collections for over a decade now. Any sport, baseball, basketball, football, or hockey, in any era, vintage or modern, will do. Just no junk wax error sets, please. To learn more and to sell Greg Morris your cards, go to www.gregmorriscards.com. Fill out the consignment sale request form and someone will get back to you on how to get cash for your cards. Also, if you're a dealer looking to sell your collection, Greg Morris wants to talk. Plenty of dealers use Greg Morris' massive eBay platform as a way to consign their cards. Take advantage of Greg's experience in the hobby to get more bang for your buck. We are back with Oz and Tony. Uh, is this is going to be something you look to do more shows? Yeah. Um, so we, we, we've signed up for the same show again. And we're not really looking to be super dealers and, and running all over the, you know, all up and down the East Coast. So you know, that's just not something that, you know, we got wise families, jobs and all that stuff. So, but we kind of, we're hoping to make that our kind of hometown show where, it's I, I believe he's going to do it like every six months or so, which kind of falls in line with with, uh, you know, our work schedule and things like that. So, yeah, yeah we are signed up again and we're going to we're Oz doesn't know. But, yeah, we're going to record again. We're going to do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So rest up. Yeah. So rest up. Um, and, you know, we're looking forward to it. And, and, and now, you know, we have that that first show under our belt and we kind of know what to expect, what to look out for. And like like I said, it was just fun. Like it was different. We've never done it before. I mean, I've only <laughs> that was like the second or third car show I have been to in, in years. So to be on the other side of the table where people are walking up and saying, "Hey, you want to buy this? You want to buy that?" I, I'm like, "Oh, well, wait, what?" So, um, so getting my feet wet with that is nice, and we're, I know I'm looking forward to to doing it again. And and the best thing, John, was was. The kids, man, just just messing with the kids, them coming up to the table. They had their little Zion cases and, you know, their little briefcases and they're walking up and they're, hey, you guys trading, you guys buying, you know, Tony was like, hey, yeah, come on. Anybody that came up that that said a little kid, you, come on. And you gave free you gave free packs out. Yes. Which is which is something I try to do. But I, for, what did you, what was the product? Was it illusions or, or mosaic? S- Mosaic. Like, yeah. Oh my God. You're making me feel bad. Like I'm giving out like 96 <laughs> score packs with possible <laughs> Jeter, you know, first score in there, but uh, all joking aside, man, that's very cool. I, I think you guys, if you listen to me, you know, my platform with, with kids in the hobby that that's near and dear to my heart. I started at seven years old a long time ago, if that'll tell you anything, but uh, I think they're important. You know, I, I, I know I've had debates with people, uh, you know, in, in person, uh, you know, who, who tell me like, I appreciate that you like kids in the hobby job, but I think it's a little bit overrated. Like you could start when you're 22, you can, but I think you're more apt to be long-term in the hobby when you start 
uh, at a younger age. And it's never too late to collect. I'm not saying if you don't start as a kid, I don't watch you or I'm not that guy. I'm just saying I, it's refreshing to see, you know, young kids. And I'll be, and let's let's be real. It's not that easy for them and when you compare it to maybe us who who work and have jobs and have, you know, disposable income. Uh, you know, when I, and it, to me, it's harder to be a kid in the hobby now than when I was starting at seven years old in 1979 and packs cost 25 cents, right? Which would probably be the equivalent of a dollar or two today, which is very cheap. There's very few packs, if, if any, that are a dollar or two uh, anymore. You know, even even flagship is 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 higher than that. And uh, opening day, uh, you know, is, is fifty four dollars a box. That's about you know almost two bucks a pack. So, uh, and it's opening day. You know, I, I I know what it's it is, and I'm not down in it. But you know, it's it's not the most popular product in the, in the world either. But uh, to, to to see kids and hobbies is important and. Probably another reason I love that episode is, is hearing you talk about you giving those mosaic packs out and, and doing that. Uh, no questions asked, no strings attached. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've done that uh, with, with packs. And, you know, when you give that pack to the kid and mom or dad's like, you know, at first looking kind of funny, like, did he take that and open? Like, what's going on here? Do, do I, I, I got to pay for this? <laughs> and and you tell him, like, no, that's on the house, and you know. And, um, you know, just seeing the parent can't thank you enough and the kid lights up. And, you know, it, you never know what that one pack could do, right? They hit something really nice. And I know you guys said they had to, like, if you, I'll give you the pack, but could you open it here? We want to see yeah. what you get. <laughs> right. You know, but you never know, right? They pull something big that could just light that fire. And 30 years later, that kid's going to remember, hey, I remember I was in Tony's table, gave me that pack. <laughs> I hit this. And here I am 30 years later, right? Those are those, those, those instances where, like, you can't put a price. Uh, on stuff like that and uh, uh hearing you guys do that uh, i think it's it speaks volumes to to your mindset who you are uh, as people and uh, uh you know kudos uh, kudos on a great episode kudos on a great show kudos for for keeping the kids in mind and doing that very unselfish and and very very cool i i think if you know more dealers kind of th- thought a little bit along those lines maybe not even if it's every show guys but every once in a while uh to do something like that you know you could say well why not every show well you know there's costs involved sometimes if you do something all the time it sort of gets expected uh, and yeah. lose its sort of its, its luster uh you know uh but uh it's something i try to do and and it's it's not you know it's not as hard as people think or dealers think it can be. I like to see more uh, kind of people, to, you know, to, especially at smaller shows. I get it. You, you know, you, it's, it's a little difficult doing that in the national when there's 60,000 people streaming by your table. <laughs> you know, I, I get all that, you know, but at, at your local show where there's between 500, a thousand people coming through the doors, especially when you think, you know, maybe 500, a thousand people, but they're not all kids. So do something for the kids that come to the show. Cause to me, they're really the, the lifeline of the hobby uh, to keep it going forward. I'm not going to be here forever as much as I not like to think about that all the time. It's just, uh, that's that's life and uh we gotta you know it's got to be someone coming up uh, behind me behind you guys kind of the to take that baton and and run it forward and uh you know it's it, it's important it's something you know when i started at seven uh, i was welcomed into the hobby by by most everybody and i try to be you know the same way and pay, pay it for it so hearing you guys do that uh i, I was literally smiling while riding in my car, you know, listening to that that segment of the show too, and uh, knowing that uh, you know that you like that and uh, you care enough, and here you are, you're 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 new and you care enough to do that. You know, there's there's people who've been doing it a long time and and aren't as unselfish as that. So yeah, and, uh, and John, that that was a big. Um... A big thing for us when we did the show, we we said to ourselves, "Listen, it was even in the in the beginning of the the show before we you know actually did it, and we talked about dealers that just sit behind 
the table and they don't interact with, you know, the customers that are coming through or the, you know, the kids or anybody, they're just sitting there or they're on their phone. And, and it's just like, you know, why don't you just do a little bit, make a little bit of effort and you might actually sell something, you know, yeah. or they won't have their merchandise priced. So they don't have it priced. And then they're not talking to the people. And then they, they're upset at the end of the day when they realize they didn't sell anything. Yeah. Oh, that, that show sucked. Did the show yeah. suck or did you suck? <laughs> you know, cause yeah. it's like, dude, you got to step up your game. And so Tony and I went in there with that mindset because we both have sales backgrounds. So it's like, dude, yeah. we just got to bring what we have from our experiences and, and, and do it. And it, and it just, it was just like, you know, riding a bike and, you know, sales is yeah. sales. And that's all it was. And, and that's a great point uh, as you, you know, I don't, you don't have to talk anyone's ear off necessarily, but at least be personable. Hey, how are you doing? How's the show? What's going on? Is there anything in particular you're looking for? Whatever just flows, right? It's sort of a flow. I remember doing my first show at, as the 15 year old kid. I did, I did great financially at the time, 1500 bucks in 1987, which was even more than it would be today. But I'll be honest with you, I was a shy kid. And frankly, the fact that I did that well with, you know, to piggybacking off what you said, I was shy. I didn't, like, I sat in a chair until someone, like, wanted something or pointed to something. I was kind of, you know, what you shouldn't do. Not because I was being doing it intentionally or I was a grouch or grumpy. I was just so shy and learning mm -hmm. still kind of, it was my first, I had worked for a card store kind of working at the show behind the scenes, sort of like making shoe boxes and monster boxes. Now here I am 15 years old uh, doing the show with my own stuff by myself. It was so, sort of like, I don't want to say deer in headlights because I had enough hobby experience even at that young age. But the you know the the, the hot stage lamps were, were warm, and between that and being shy, I just sat there. I, I remember you know I, I talked about this on the show. I remember one gentleman came up to my table and he goes, "I'm interested in this card, but I kind of wanted to you know see if I could get it for a little less. I'll uh, wait till your you know your dad comes back <laughs> and uh, talk you know see if he can do anything." And I'm like. You know, in my 15 year old squeaky voice, you know, like, sir, that's this is my stuff. You know, it is, you know, and I think that even played that was kind of early in the day. And I'm like, I ah, people don't even think this is my like that kind of like I got a little quiet and a little more reserved. And then as I did more shows uh, by myself, um, you know, I, I kind of broke out of that shell today. I, obviously, at age 49, people are probably like, Listen, John. I, I know I I don't need you to, to ask me how the weather is outside. Just you know, but uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, now you know you you get better at that the more you 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 do it. But I remember my first show was like the script of how not to uh, be behind the table at a car show. The fact that I did as well as I did was probably more luck. Uh, than anything else, and uh, I'm thankful for that. But you're right, you know that skill to to you know interact with people and be personable. I guess some people are better at it than others to to defend some folks, you know. But uh, the, they, to be honest, John, that that's an acquired skill. Like yeah, the same way you were, I, I I still am to that day. I'm a very shy individual, and it takes a lot for me in social settings. It takes a lot for me right now to be on this damn mic and talk to you. <laughs> you know, knowing that this is going to be broadcast to thousands of people like yeah. it, it, it is. It, and it's something that I've worked on my entire life as as a little kid. Yeah. I would just freeze. You know, if I was 15 years old trying to, you know, be at a, at a show that that would have never happened. I would have never been able to do it. I would have just froze and been like uh, not knowing what to say and probably would have just ended up giving, giving away my collection. Here you go. Just take it. I want to get out of here. <laughs> um but that's just something, you know, being put in those situations, my mom constantly, listen, you got to get out there. You got to stop, yeah. you know, you're worthy, yeah. you know, you, you can do it, you can do it. And it was just that yeah. constant, you know, affirmation that finally I was like, you know what, screw this. I can do this. You know, I, yeah. I, I, if I just, if you put your mind to it and, and you apply, you know, whatever knowledge you have, and, you know, you just got to be confident, man. It's all about confidence in yourself and whatever you're doing and it'll come across and, and, yeah. you know. 
That's just all. So I applaud you for doing what you were doing at at 15. That's awesome of you. It, it's funny, as and Tony, if you would have told the 15-year-old me, like, later on, what I would be doing later in life, I would have thought you were nuts. Like, I was, <laughs> you know, you, you know how you got to do the speech class, uh, speech and English class? Mm-hmm. I would I would dread that day. My knees would be knocking, getting up in front of 30 kids that I know or, or friends with. Uh, I would try to get out of it. You know, can I write a, a thousand word essay instead? Nope, John, you can't. <laughs> and to, you know, uh, to be that person at 15. And and if you would have told me, hey, you're going to you're going to do a podcast and, and this many people are going to listen to it. You're going to be on the main stage at a, a national convention and do that there. You're going to coach varsity football, and baseball and be out in front of people have you know, parent meetings, uh, I would have thought you were insane. I would have been like, I don't know what kind of universe you're living in, but I'm not going to be doing all that stuff. But <laughs> time for a real quick break to hear from a great sponsor of the show. But right after that, we will be back. Like the athletes we admire, the sports card shop is changing the game. We're not launching threes, bombing drives, or hitting dingers, but we have built a unique gathering spot for all collectors to trade cards, talk sports, play games, and watch their favorite athletes on the big screens. Yes, we've partnered with Panini, Upper Deck, Leaf, Tops, Fanatics, Pokemon, and others to bring you all the latest in sealed wax and singles. But the sports card shop in New Buffalo, Michigan is much, much more. Our recent expansion brings collectible sneakers, Hot Wheels, and more sports and entertainment memorabilia into the mix. Our new Collector's Cave game room is the perfect place to throw a rip party, bring friends, rip packs, trade cards, play billiards, ping pong, shuffleboard, classic arcade, and Xbox games, all while watching your favorite sport on TV. Visit us at thesportscardshop.com. Follow us on social at underscore sports card shop or better yet, visit us in person to learn about special events, party packages, new products and everything we're doing for you. The Sports Card Shop, connecting people, sports and the hobby around the world. Right. We've returned with more from the fellows. I think the older you get, (laughs) at least speaking for myself, I think one of the reasons it's difficult to do those things is because you're self-conscious and you're worried about what everyone's going to think. Yeah, I want to, you know, am I going to spit on myself when I'm doing the speech? Are they going to laugh? You know, my buddies later are going to be like, ah, we saw you spit on yourself. We don't think we missed it. Like, (laughs) you, because you worry about silly things like that. And then as you get older, you realize, like, you know what? I don't really, I'm going to do it. I don't really care. I'm going to do the best I can. And I don't really care what someone, I mean, I do, but I don't. I'm not going to lose sleep uh, over it. And uh, you sort of lose those inhibitions. And I think mm-hmm. when you do, that's when you sort of fine tune those skills, if you will, or, 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 or get better at them. And I mean, that's, that's how I've, you know, got like, Hey, listen, I got to do this. Might as well do the best I can at it. Cause you're not, not doing it. So you might as well be as good at it as you can be. Because if you don't, you know, it's going to be more noticeable to be bad at it than to, to, be, to, to hone your skill and, and, and be good at it. And so that's, for me, that's kind of where the improvement uh, came. And I think caring, you know, I know it sounds weird to say caring less what people think. It's not that I don't care what people think. Even with the show, I always say, listen, give me your feedback, good or bad. But, you know, you just kind of put yourself out there and say, hey, I'm going to be me. I'm going to be genuine. And so I'm not going to get criticized for being phony might be criticized because I'm ugly. I might get, you know, (laughs) but uh, you know, but I'm I'm not going to get like, you know, the fakes. So I think when you, when you, when you get to that point, uh, I think that's where you get better at, at those sort of things, at least speaking from my personal point of view, you know what I mean? So guys, I got to ask you, um, you know, with the podcast, what has been the most difficult thing pertaining to the podcast or maybe another way to put it, what has been sort of the surprise? Like I didn't realize it was going to be maybe that difficult or that much work involved. Is there one thing that sticks out to, to either of you guys? I would say initially was the editing yep. because um, 
that and and also when you listen back to yourself i'm like dude i sound like an idiot <laughs> so you know that that's that's something that um and i probably still do and it's just now i'm just used to it so, yeah, don't feel I, bad i'm on okay. i'm in the 170s of episode <laughs> and i still sometimes say that so, yeah, so don't so. you know you're not alone, and at least you know I don't have an excuse. 170 episodes in, right? So don't don't feel too bad. Don't beat yourself up uh, too much. Yeah, editing that's a great. That's I think it's the common answer because it's probably the the, the, the truest answer, right? Is people you know uh, don't realize like they hear an hour of the final product and they don't realize kind of what goes into what's right. entailed to to get that. I've gotten better. One thing I will say, and I'm sure you will too, or have already, uh, I've gotten better at that and and learning to use like I use a program called Audacity. Uh, mm-hmm. Boring people out there who don't do podcasting, but uh, learning sort of the nuances of the, the the program itself has really like streamlined. It takes me less time editing now than it ever has before. There was like tools on the program itself that I wasn't even utilizing. And then one day I just said, you know what? I'm going to take two hours instead of watching card material, you know, card shows. I'm going to take two hours and, and watch tutorials on the, on the actual editing software I use to, to, to know it inside and out. And it was really the best two hours I spent, I, and, and, you know, shame on me for not doing that maybe <laughs> even sooner, quite frankly. But, uh, you know, stuff like that, you, you learn and, and, and along the way, and um, that's, that's how you get better and uh, uh, you learn. I know what, what, one other thing that helped the, the editing, editing too is just that I feel like we've gotten better at just doing this show, which cuts down yeah. on the editing, which cuts down on, you know, the pauses and the things, you know, all these little goofy things that get in the way later on. So now, I mean, basically our show is we just record what we would talk about any other time anyways. There's no yeah. difference in what we do on the mic than what it is off the mic. There might be a couple choice words that get, you know, don't make the air that, you know, when we're talking about our teams and things like that. Yeah. But other than that, so that that helps a lot, too. So that that's that's a major thing where it's like, you know, what well, once we hit our flow and hit our stride, we don't have to edit anymore as much and and just, you know, let, let the show flow. Yeah, I, so I ask you the reverse question, right? What, and I, 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 I think I can venture a guess, but I'll let you guys answer this. What's been the best part of, of starting the podcast? The best part for me has just been the interaction with the guests and just getting their perspectives on anything and everything about the hobby. Um, like for me, you know, Tony usually is like, listen, you know, you're, you're the content guy. And he's the editing guy. So I usually come up with the questions. And, you know, for a while there, it was just like interview, 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 interview. So I'm here, you know, delivering the mail. I'm working seven days a week. Sometimes I'm getting back at eight o'clock. And Tony's like, yo, I need those questions, bro. Let's go. Come on. You know, talk about a slave driver here. Like this guy's on it. You know, once he gets his mind focused and I'm like, dude, I'm tired as hell. I, you know, so I, OK, OK. So I'll come home and, and I'll get these questions ready. Um, but then when, you know, I really. I really do take my time and like John, you know, you, you, you flow, you do it off the cuff for us. This is just all new to us. So it's kind of like if we would just do an off the cuff show, I have no idea how that would come about. So it's well, like- I will say this in your defense, guys, I don't want, like, you know, when I first started, I was probably writing more stuff down. I, I, I don't want to come across as like, Hey, I've been like that since day one. I, I've, You're the I've guru, been- the guru. <laughs> yeah, No, 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 not, not at all. Like, you know, I probably wrote more questions and notes down when I first started the show, kind of found my my niche sort of and, and then sort of honed that skill to, uh, gradually. That wasn't like, hey, I've been doing that from the jump. Not not a, not true at all. So, uh, you know, things can evolve and change. Like one of the thing, one of the skills I was terrible at uh, and, and I'm not proud of it, but I'm an honest guy. I, I'm sure I still do it, but not nearly as much as I used to do. If like you listen to early episodes, uh, I think it's the New Yorker in me, not, not to make excuses, but a little bit of the product of a, I would, and being old too, is like, I'd get a thought in my head and like, I wanted to get it out there before I forgot it. And 
Um, so sometimes I cut someone like a guest up, not <laughs> not intentionally or not to be rude or disrespectful, but like if I don't say this now, I'm going to forget to talk about this with you kind of a deal. And so I would like cut people off and like, you know, people would tell me like, hey, I know you don't mean malice or anything bad by it, but like you're doing, did you know? And I knew it, but even hearing someone else kind of mention it, I'm like, yeah, I got to fix that. And so now I'm I'm better at you know, letting obviously someone finish their what they're saying. And even if like if I do have something like that where it's in my head, that might be something I actually write down. Like I'm yeah. not gonna like stop them, but I'll you know, in a shorthand version, I'll write it down and then come back to it uh and not sort of like cut them off or or pivot uh to something else. And and it you know you learn by trial and error and um I've gotten better. I'm not saying I never do it. Uh, I probably did it even tonight, but uh, I don't do it nearly uh, as much uh, as I, I did initially when I first started the show. And, and you know, sometimes every once in a while I'll go back and listen to some of those early episodes, Tony and Oz, and I got to be honest with you, I, they make me cringe. Like I, <laughs> I'll hear stuff that I don't, that, I, I've kind of fixed now, but wasn't fixed then. And I'm like, oh man, that's terrible. And I, I say to myself, man, I, I'd like to delete that episode, not because of the person, because of me, yeah. but like it's part of the history of the show. I, I can't, right? you know, I can't delete. I always joke sometimes like, hey, if, you, if you're new to the show, start with like episode 40 and go up from there, <laughs> you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, but uh, it's it's part of the, you know, it's part of the archive and, uh uh, you get better. It's like anything else in life, right? The more you do something, uh, hopefully anyway, the, the better yeah. you, you get at it. And, and what I learn stuff, you know, I learn stuff uh, every day, not even just hobby wise, but podcasting, mm-hmm. little tips and tricks with editing that uh, you can, you can do. And um, uh, I'm always looking for the, the, you know, the next thing that'll just make life a little bit, uh, a little bit easier. So, uh, and you guys doing a, you know, for for you know early episodes, you guys are to me you sort of ahead of where I was when I was in those those that stage of, of this podcast. So uh, kudos there uh, as well. well. And to be honest, the only reason that we're there is because literally we consume so many podcasts during the day, especially for me and and Tony as well. It, but it's like you know I'm a mailman, so all I do is plop in my earbuds and it's all day. And I usually work yeah. 12, 12 hours a day. So I run out of podcasts and I'm like, yo, Tony, is there anything else to good, good to listen to? Cause I just went through like everything and you know, I'll binge when, when you had your, you know, you have how many episodes? So like 150, I forget how many. We have a hundred. We're in the one seventies of sports what? carnation. We're in the uh, just shy of one ten for hobby quick it's so almost so 200 to buy. yeah yeah so 280 290 episodes and yeah. i binged you know like probably a week i, I heard them all you know it was like well, the, check, <laughs> well, the checks in the mail eyes and, and you'll probably get it maybe you can <laughs> yeah, so, right. <laughs> yeah we didn't set say, that up yeah. either by the way <laughs> that's so. funny i've got jokes but the next sponsor you hear from is no joke let's hear from them we'll be right back after that Hey everybody, have you heard about Collectible? It's the one-stop shop where any collector can buy and trade affordable shares in some of the most rare and valuable sports cards and memorabilia in the world, starting from just $5. From 1952 Mickey Mantle PSA 10s and Wilt Chamberlain's iconic rookie uniform to one-of-one Patrick Mahomes RPAs, rare LeBron James logo mans, and everything in between, Collectible is creating never-before-seen access and opportunities for all. Let's grow the hobby we love together. Please note this is not a recommendation or solicitation to buy any security. All investment decisions should be undertaken after doing your own research. Sports Card Nation is back with Tony and Oz. I will say though, with with, uh, with Oz, he um, so he's our research department, and and one thing that I, I we kind of talked about when our we wanted to do our show, but we didn't want to do the typical. Tell us how long you've been collecting and da da da. Everybody kind of has the same story. So, yeah. you know, and that gets repetitive and things like that. There are, you know, the, everybody in the hobby has a different story. So, you know, let's, let's see. And, and he does a hell of a job of, you know, <laughs> I don't know if he just delivers the mail. He does private investigating on the side, <laughs> but, um, 
you know, I mean, he'll go on the social media and he'll go into the post and then just, you know, dig and dig and find interesting things Yeah. that when we ask people, they're like, wow, you know, I didn't think that. <laughs> and, and, and it just, but then that leads to bigger and better conversations about the yes. hobby as opposed to just, which is your favorite prism card and, you know, <laughs> what do you want to buy next week and, you know, things like that. So, you know, he, he does an awesome job with that and, and it just, it's totally helped the show grow. Well, yeah. And that's a skill. It, it's two things guys uh, to do that. It's a skill number one and number two, it shows you care. If you're taking the time out uh, to do that, it share, it shows that you care. You know, if a guest is coming on and, and donating their time, I know you don't pay for guests. I sure as heck aren't going to pay for anyone to come on here. Maybe that's why there's, I've gotten a few no's, but the all <laughs> joking aside, right? We don't pay for guests. It's the least we can do. I think is to, to get to know the person even more before they even hit the airwaves with you. Um, you know, especially maybe. John, especially the fact that we really just started, so we can't just act like we've been there. <laughs> we we have to go above and beyond, you know, in our episode yeah. to to really, you know, because we we are appreciated, you know, appreciative of you, you know, Peter Pacman, you know. Rob, the sports car therapist, the names, they go on and on, like the people that we've already, like, it's insane that I think about it. I've ju- I just looked at our list of, of interviews that we've done. And I'm like, holy crap, dude, are you serious? Like, we yeah. talked to these oh, dudes. You just start, you're just starting. That list is going to get longer, so don't, yeah. don't get in all yet. I mean, you got No, nah, no, it's, it's, but it's that just, it's just, get bigger. yeah, yeah, it, it's just you know, awesome, that, though, and it's awesome. And, and then the best thing is when you ask that question and you can, you know, you could see it in that person's eyes, like, wow, you know, that, like that's a that. really, really good question, and it makes yeah. you feel good, like, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, and, and Tony, thank you, bro, because that's <laughs> the first time you said that, yeah. and I appreciate that, bro. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. Well, and, it, on and listen, listen, I'm sad it on tape, but you know, and you, you know, you're, <laughs> you're the architect. You, you put this whole thing together. You do a great job editing. You know, he, he did a crash course on it, John. So it's like, you know, anything that we got yeah. going on that Tony's the man. So well, we, we just work well together. Chemistry. You got great chemistry. Thanks. That's important. That's like, people don't realize that too. Like it's, you got to mesh to do. It's easy for me to do this show. I, I you know, I'm only going to argue or, or, you know, I got only got myself to blame, but to, <laughs> if I, you know, uh, to do it with, with other folks and, and, and whether you're related or not related to, you know, uh, even doing like I do a, a football podcast uh, called roughing the passer. Yeah. It's solely sports, no hobby. Uh, with uh, David Lee, who's actually a, a Beckett writer, and my son Jordan, who believes he knows more football than me, but we can debate <laughs> that. But those are two people I know, and sometimes, you know, I mean, you hit you hit bumps in the road, or it doesn't always uh, click. So there, there's there's an art to it, and you guys, uh, like I said, you you, you do a, a masterful job with it, and to do it like that. Like you said, you know, kind of just starting out, you're you're, you're sort of ahead of the curve, and uh, that's going to bode well uh, for for the future of, of uh, Cousins Collectibles. I'm I'm on board, so I'm I'm excited uh, to see where you go. Just uh, you know, when you pass me, don't uh, don't forget about the <laughs> the old guy. You know, pick me up, hey. uh, straighten my walker out, hey, and hey. I'll get rolling again. <laughs> just so we get this clear, John, you're 49, right? I am. Okay, I'm 47, so let's not act like you're the old man on the porch. No, I, I'm, I'm right there no, with you, brother. Listen, you're in a you're in a better shape, 47, than I am a 49. Let's let's be real yeah. too. Like, uh, hey, like, every, like I'm not every walking, time. I'm not delivering. I'm not delivering any mail. Keeping like keeping my figure up. Like I'm eating. I'm eating ho hos. Talking to people about baseball cards. <laughs> hey, I'm now, John, walking. I got a I got a question for you on the football front. Sure. Um, so you talked, I think it was Monday where you were doing the rundown with the quarterbacks to buy, yeah. sell, hold yeah. and, uh, Tua, I believe you said he was a buy, I, think. I, 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 I still, that. but you know, with today's news with Tyreek Hill, yeah. you know, so now where, 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 where are you at with that? I, I still like Tua. I, I think he's sort of gotten a raw deal. If you look at the games he's played and some of the performances, he can, he can play, you know, uh, every once in a while, it might be a game that's, you know, a little bit of a clunker. Um, I, I know when they side Bridgewater, you know, everyone's like, oh, they're, they're trying to force him out. Um, if, you know, if they didn't believe in him, 
uh, he would have probably been cut or traded. Uh, Bridgewater, I think, has brought in guys as more of a, a veteran presence to help him. Uh, you know, if you're a Bridgewater fan, you know, if he's – let me put it this way. If Bridgewater plays, it's because Tua is struggling. And then, then we can start to talk about, right. you know, is the cat run out of lives here, you know, uh, to use an analogy. I like Tua still. Um, uh, again, like I said, if they didn't see something in him, they would have moved off him. This would have been the year uh, to do it. The new coach there, uh, McDaniel, uh, I know he's he's kind of new to uh, to head. Co- he's first time head coach, but he's not new to co- NFL coaching. Mm-hmm. And think I'm not a Dolphins fan, but I'm a football fan. And everything I read, he literally watched every play Tua has played in the NFL and made his assessment to keep him and feels like what what he's going to run, and he's an offensive guy. That's his uh, side of the ball. He feels like two was, can work in his system. And so if he's going to get an endorsement from an offensive, I don't want to say mastermind, but someone highly respected uh, on that side of the ball, uh, and I've already kind of liked what I sort of saw already. I just think people, you know, if you're not Patrick Mahomes out the gate, uh, or even Joe Burrow pre-injury and then post-injury, you know, Justin Herbert, people <clears throat> kind of like forget about you or they, yeah. you know, that's, that's, that's the exception more than the rule. But if you look at Tua's numbers and his games, individual games, he's had some very, like, I don't know where the, the hate comes from really. <laughs> uh, and there seems to be a lot with him and I'm not saying he's the only one, uh, but and his cards are, are undervalued now. If you are like me and you you still think he's got a shot, listen, I could be wrong. Again, that's just an opinion. But I just think for for what his cards are going for now, it's not a bad. And you believe in him, he's not a bad guy to like scoop some of those rookies <laughs> up. Let's say and, and hold on to him. You know, again, if you do that, I mean that's my opinion. But oh, you have to make your own assessment too but uh i i you know if the Steelers, i'm a steel huge Steeler guy and obviously we know we you know we were in the market for a quarterback would would then uh retire uh retire which he probably should have did last year quite frankly um i wouldn't have been that disappointed it had they acquired Tua or the dolphins caught him and the steelers uh picked them up my son uh who know that you know i kid about him no he does know his football played it he wanted to it too. He's like, if the Dolphins like get rid of him, we should be all over him. And that's not that didn't necessarily factor in what I thought of him. We, we were just along the same lines. You know, he hasn't really been there that long. It's not like he's been five years in the league and and hasn't done anything. Uh, he's still pretty young. You know, I, I think the the biggest knock you could say about him is you worry about maybe an injury. Uh, but other than that, um, you know, when yeah. he plays. Yeah. When he you know. pl- that's the thing with him it's it really comes down to staying healthy because yeah. when he's playing he he actually produces now yeah. I thought it was funny how you had the entire uh NFC East and you sold them all so. you know we're diehard Philly fans and I yeah. and listen it's not that I disagree but I just thought it was funny everybody was so, you know sell them all sell and them I all. didn't do that on pro- <laughs> it's funny when you hear me say that yeah like, that was when I realized what I had done like I wasn't yeah. I'm like, I just sold everyone in this division now. Like, <laughs> I, I they all Daniel, suck. Sell them all. Yeah, well, I don't like Daniel Jones. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, uh, Carson Wentz is, you know, yeah. Carson Wentz, right? I don't think, I think he's another guy that gets a little bit too much criticism, but I also don't think he's great, right? He's kind of one of those serviceable guys. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Jalen Hurts, I mean, you could speak to him probably more than I do. Uh, you know, I think they a little bit, they, they kind of drafted a little bit. He got drafted a little higher and even stuff. I read that the, the Eagles were in on some of these guys. So what's yeah. that tell you? If well, you know, if, with, with, with Jalen, the only reason they were in on him that high was because of Carson. Cause Carson yeah. wasn't doing, you know, it, it's just, it, yeah. it's funny because between the two of them, like if Jalen had Carson skills or vice versa, if, if Carson had the leadership ability of Jalen, you know, we would have a great quarterback, but it's like, they kind of like they're missing that, that key component. So Jalen, he needs to step up his play. Can he get to that level where he can be an elite passer? I don't think so, but he has all the other intangibles. 
be back with some more NFL talk right after a great word from one of our great sponsors. Pastime Marketplace has a line of graded card cases that are waterproof, airtight, dust tight, and hardened to protect and organize your valuable collection. Each of our cases come with pre-cut and pre-formed foam so you don't have to cut and tear the foam when you get your case. The pre-cut foam inserts are sized to hold PSA, Beckett, SGC, and CGS slabs. Store it all safely and securely with a case from Pastime Marketplace. Check them out at www.pastimemarketplace.com. We are back with more from Oz and Tony. You know what's funny is how the NFLs evolve, guys. You, 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 you know, you guys remember if you're around my age or, or at least even in your 30s, right? You remember <clears throat> quarterbacks, man, they would get drafted and sit three, four, sometimes more, yeah. learning from the guy in front of him before they even asked to play. Like Steve if they Young. played before Steve, Steve Young. Young. Yep. Aaron Rodgers. Number one example. Aaron Rodgers. People forget about that, man. Talk about maybe, you know, we, we say, why is the guy so rude and bristly? Maybe <laughs> it's just uh, he stayed in that green room for like two days before, like everyone was getting, yeah. you know, I remember I watched that draft live as I do most Mm -hmm. and I didn't know him that much at that point. You know, I knew he was a highly touted quarterback from Cal, but I actually felt generally bad. Like every pick they would put the camera on him. It could be a defensive lineman taken the cameras (laughs) on air. Who cares? They're not even filming the the defensive lineman getting out, getting up, buttoning his his sport (laughs) coat. They just pictured Aaron Rodgers just the face there. Like, yep. Yeah. Yep. Like, I'm like, this guy, they're just making, like, they're, like, I thought, like, like ESPN is really enjoying the, the heck out of this. You this know what? And that's where he got that chip. He got that chip. Yeah. That it, it still, it grows bigger every year, you know, but the only yeah. thing with Aaron, man, it's like, he gets into the playoff, like MVP, you know, regular season, he gets into the damn season. playoffs and it's like, what is going on, Aaron? Come on. Yeah, kill him. He wait. So he waits at the draft. Then he gets. The, then he gets drafted by the Packers, where Brett Favre was still yeah. a couple years left. And then we all know what Brett Favre did. Um, I don't know yet. Right? Maybe <laughs> today I am. Ask me tomorrow. Right? To the point where the Packers finally said a few years after that, we're not. We're making the decision for you. We're we're not going to keep you. And that's when he went on like this weird tour with. I uh, went to the Vikings at the Jets, right. then, uh, you know, there might even be another team uh, we, we forgot about, but, uh, you know, not pretty at the end. And, and then finally it was Rogers turn. So, uh, you know, I, I, I get, I see a little bit uh, of where he might get that little bristliness, but uh, I don't want to blame it all on that, but uh, yeah, he has had struggles in the postseason. you know, definite hall of famer, but he's, you know, he's got that one ring and, and some would argue uh, you, you probably should have at least more than one, but uh, you know we 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 come from that era in football, guys, right? Where quarterbacks rarely played right away to mm-hmm. now, where like you have to play right away and you have to do something right yeah. away, or we're we're gonna move off you and start looking at the next quarterback uh, uh, crop. You know, and John, it and, almost is like they're throwing these guys to the wolves, and sometimes yeah. I think it's stunting their growth. You know, you're not giving them the yeah. proper time to develop as a quarterback. So, like, let's even think about Drew Bledsoe. If he didn't get hurt, would Tom Brady even be yeah. what he was? You know, like so. I, I laugh at just the time, but we've all seen it, right? The Tom Brady combine stuff. Oh, you know? that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the worst thing is the picture of him like yeah. the picture of him in just the shorts like gives hope for everyone uh, like i can be an nfl player look at this dude are you kidding and yet here we're talking about arguably the greatest football yeah, player to ever the play goat the, game. Like, the it's, goat it's crazy like i i sometimes will watch i'll go on youtube and watch that stuff because i still may like how did this happen like did he sign some deal with the devil? Did he sell his soul? <laughs> like, this can't well, be real. Can you tell, though, like, his pictures <laughs> from when he was young to now? It's like he just keeps getting prettier and prettier. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's just, it's crazy. I don't, like, you know, <laughs> I, I'm going to get weird here. Like, it, it, I'm, you know, people believe, like, aliens are, are right on Earth and, like, <laughs> they look sort of like us. And yeah. I think Tom Brady's one. If, this, if that is, if that's a true story, I'm not saying it's true or not, I don't know what the heck's going on anymore. <laughs> but if, if you subscribe to that theory, uh, I think that 
uh, Tom Brady's one of those guys. Like I, I think like, you know, I've I've never seen any red. Like if he gets cut, it might come out like green news or something. Like, <laughs> something, something ain't right because I saw. You know, it was not highly. T- I mean, he didn't even really share time at college. Yeah, uh, Michigan. At Michigan, and was not highly touted. Not a physical specimen. You know, to, not that you, you need your quarterback to run a fast forty necessarily, but nothing flashed off the page even in the combine. And and now we're talking about like the greatest quarterback to, to ever play the game. I don't. Well, I don't know how that happened. And. Uh, you know, you, know, it's, you, you can't measure you can't measure heart and determination. Bro. Yeah, no, you're and right. And there's some right. dudes that they they you know they have slightly above average skill, but then that heart and that yeah. that desire to be the best, like there there there's only a couple people, you know, Jordan, Kobe, yeah. and then you got to throw you know uh, Tom there because Tom his, his competitiveness yeah. is unreal. Yeah, and I listen. I'm a Steeler guy. I I can't stand him. I I like him. I like. I don't. I have a little less disdain since he's in the NFC. But uh, I gotta give, like you said, you gotta give credit where it's due. I mean, the guy got gets it done. And every time you think like you count him out, he proves you wrong. You know, every time, almost every time. And uh, yeah. you know, so yeah, I don't know. It's like a Disney. It's like re- watching a real life Disney movie. Yeah. You know, just yeah. out. You know. Mm-hmm. Not a physical specimen, not highly touted. You know, it's like watching Rudy, but instead of it just like one game, it's like a seventeen year old career, <laughs> a whole career. Like, <laughs> it's like Rudy times seventeen. Yeah, years. you're it's you're just, like waiting for it to it. end, but it just keeps going and going and oh oh so, oh, he's back. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, I figured that. So you know, but uh, I, I won't be sad when he really retires. And it's funny, I knew he was going to do what he what he did. Yeah, like right. I, was, I said, I'm a show. He's not. He's he'll be back. So I, you know, I'll pat myself a little bit. Uh, on the back but it, kudos it, it, to yeah, you it's... john kudos to you you <laughs> called it <laughs> but you know it's a different era of football again yeah. like you you gotta play right away you gotta be productive right away or you're out or you or you're gonna get a change of scenery and get maybe one more chance uh at a different look you know my guy now in pittsburgh right trubisky this is gonna be it uh, this is gonna be it for him, dude. Like, dude I thought it happen. was it for him three years ago. What are you talking about? Yeah. Well, if it don't happen, <laughs> if it don't, yeah, a lot of people did. If a lot, if it don't happen now, you know, that's uh, he's, yeah. he's gonna run out this, of chances. This, this dude so. got nine lives. I don't, I don't know what's yeah. going on there. Yeah. Well, guys, uh, man, I, we could do we, maybe one day we'll do like a, a we'll sports. Do a fo- we'll do a football episode for sure. We'll definitely do a football episode. But uh, I appreciate you guys uh, coming on. I love what you're doing, what you show. Keep it up. Uh, again, you, you you do a great job. Uh, genuine uh, people of the hobby, and we, we need that. We need more of that than, than not. And uh, uh, so, again, my hat's off to you. And, and to come in new like that, I think that, again, you know, the degree of difficulty to do that coming in kind of new, uh, is even more difficult. So I, I tip my cap to you guys. Thanks for coming on the show and spending some time. I watch as I always do with all the guests, give out all your social medias, platforms, where people can catch the podcast, see what you guys are doing. Uh, I know already, but for everyone else out there. <laughs> So you know what's funny, John? It's like we're always used to asking our guests to yeah. do it, so we <laughs> never really done it. <laughs> well, here you go. Now you're I don't know. Class, I don't know. But... Uh, you know, we have our IG cousins underscore collectibles, and then of course we have the podcast cousins collectibles podcast. Pretty simple, nothing extravagant there. But seriously, we we want to thank you, John, because you were the first, um, you know, big presence in the hobby to say yes. I'll do an interview yeah. with you guys. And, you know, you kind of catapulted us into that next, uh, you know, just gave us the confidence to say, you know, he said yes, maybe these other guys will. So we, we really want to thank you and we appreciate you going ahead and giving us a shot because, like I said from the beginning, we we don't know what we're doing. We're just two kids well, that just, we're, we're well, not, I won't say kids. Not, maybe, maybe not <laughs> knowing what you're doing is the key. Maybe that's my problem is I, I think I know what I'm doing, <laughs> but uh, no. And, and I appreciate you saying that about me, but I, I think you've learned enough from, from talking to me, you know, uh, on two occasions verbally and in the conversation, even in text, I'm just a regular person, uh, put my pants on one leg at a time. 
Uh, I don't, I don't have that, if you will, big head, or at least I, I don't think I do. And uh, so when you asked me, I was, I was honored to come on and, and I already had been listening to the show and uh, you know, I, I don't, I'll never like ask on like, Hey, can I come on the show? I, I don't, <laughs> I, that's not, but when you did ask, like it, that was, uh, and you know, I always try to, uh, you know, accommodate everybody. And uh, I'm not, I don't feel like, Oh, I'm, you know, I'm not going on this show or that show. That's not, that's not my MO. I'll, I've never been that way. I'm not going to start uh, now. So, you know, but uh, anytime and, uh, you know, I, I know I've told you this even off the air, anytime you have a question, not that I know everything, but maybe just from doing it uh, for as long as I have, uh, again, I'm still learning stuff too. So, you know, we can all come together and sort of, uh, you know, compare notes and there's nothing wrong with that. I think we, you know, I think that's a great trait to have rather than be like, uh, oh, figure it out for yourself. That's, that's easy to do that. Right. So, uh, I'm always been open like that. I, I, I sense that with you guys too. And, uh, uh, again, for those, you know, to have, if you haven't heard, uh, the cousins collectible podcast, it's not too late. Uh, get on board and, uh, these guys are doing a great job and, uh, uh, I, I enjoy uh, when the episodes come out. Look forward to them. Uh, and I know everyone else out there will as well. Thank we'll you, see, we'll, Jay, we'll see you at the next family reunion. I think. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I'm, I'm, I'm cousin. To, and, then, and then, you know, <laughs> real quick, too, just kind of, you know, this is something these guys do, too, right? They, you know, everyone that comes on, they make them an honorable cousin. Uh, <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it's 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 funny, but it, it's cool. It, it, it's cool that they do that. And uh, there's something to that. And uh, happy to be called Cousin John. I've been called a lot worse than that. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, real quick before and just and yeah. just the crux of our show and for everybody listening man if you have a question just ask yeah. you know if, if you're going to try and jump on ebay and, and and or what and anything in life like this i we always talk about this thing transcends cards sometimes yeah. we have an interview and it's like cards are just the afterthought so like yeah. dude, a question just ask man it you'd be amazed Yep, no doubt, no doubt. These guys will help you. I'll try to help you as much as, as we can. That's that. I think a lot of people have. I don't want to make it like, hey, we're the three best guys, and you know, I think the majority, uh, you know, not everybody, but I think the majority uh, try to be like that. It's uh, a good way to be, and uh, uh, these guys uh, do a great job uh, on and off the air. So uh, keep going, guys. Keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate you. I know many others. Uh, do too and and that that will get bigger uh, as you go along uh, as as it has been with this show too so and, and one last thing john um yeah we just want to say you know we're going to have our second show at the fishtown show so if you're in the philly area definitely come check us out at the there fishtown show and that's at what the uh valley forge rivers casino rivers right. casino yep rivers casino I'm an old right. man. I, I keep forgetting. Yeah, that. I'm looking forward to that episode again. Even though you did it already, I mean, it was so good. I'm sure it'll be just just as good or pretty close. So, uh, I'll be following uh, following you on your show journey too, man. It's uh, it's fun. It gets addicted. I'm mourning yet, so you're like tattoos. <laughs> Doing shows and getting tattoos are, are are very similar. Like you do one, and then you you know you got an arm sleeve. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, uh, continued success. Thanks for coming on. We'll, we'll talk soon. Thank, Thank you, John. Iron Sports Cards is your number one source for all your PSA and other grading submissions. Their elite status improves turnaround times. Heck, they even provide the card savers. Their chat rooms provide updates on all your submissions. They also offer wax options and single cards to cover all the bases. Check them out on Facebook at Iron Sports Cards Group or on the web at ironsportscards.com or even give them a call at 1-877-I-R-O-N-P-S-A. Rob's got you covered. That's going to be a wrap for this week's episode of Sports Card Nation. want to thank you out there who listen and download this program. We don't exist without you doing that. A sincere, heartfelt thank you uh, from, from me for doing so. Thank you to Cousin Oz and Cousin Tony, uh, you know, bringing a fresh kind of perspective with their show. Uh, there's thousands of shows. And so to, to sort of make an impact, you got to do things a little bit differently. 
and I really appreciate their approach, their down-to-earth, their genuineness, and uh, uh, love what they're doing. Uh, check them out. Uh, uh, two great guys from Philly who are, are really learning, teaching, enjoying the hobby, uh, and uh, glad to call them friends. And uh, like I said, check out what they're doing. It's, it's kind of a, a different approach. At least I feel that way, and I think you uh, you enjoy them. And I hope you enjoyed the episode. I think uh, it kind of illustrated uh, kind of what they're about and uh, where they come from. And, uh, uh, yeah, we'll have them back on again, that's for sure. So uh, with that being said, uh, hope uh, all is well. Stay safe, and we'll see you very soon.